There's an intricate mechanism in your body that saves your life every single time you hurt yourself. Now, of course, you might be thinking, well, duh, if I get stabbed or shot, I'll die. But we aren't just talking about the extremes here, because without this mechanism, you could die from something as trivial as a paper cut or a bruise from running into a piece of furniture. Imagine a life where you would have to treat yourself like a glass object because your body was so fragile, anything could destroy it. For some, that's a reality, but for the vast majority, likely you, it isn't. So why is that? Well, it begins by giving a nod of thanks to special cells in our body known as megakaryocytes. These specialized cells are huge by comparison to similar cells in our body, like red blood cells. The reason for their size is partly responsible for your ability to survive the slightest abrasions. These megakaryocytes end up flaking parts of themselves into your bloodstream from your bone marrow. These sections of cell are then renamed thrombocytes, or more commonly called platelets. These platelets circulate throughout your bloodstream, largely inactive, but containing the ability to save your life. So then, say you fall off your bike and scrape your knee, or you cut yourself dicing onions, or some other mild damage to your body occurs, you notice that your wound bleeds for a while, and then it doesn't anymore. Clearly something stopped it, and that something is these platelets. On a microscopic level, zooming into your cut, we see that your blood vessels that are normally intact, like flexible pipelines containing your blood, carrying things from one area of your body to another area, are now punctured. First, the smooth muscles that help regulate the size of the vessel will be triggered to constrict. Uh, a little like a snake, this causes the inside of the blood vessel to shrink, allowing less blood flow through that area. The reason for that is to limit the blood flow out of the gaping hole that's been created by the injury. This reduces blood loss, but also allows a lower amount of shear force that might affect the repair mechanisms. Now, blood flow is lowered and the repair systems can begin by really taking hold. As such, collagen, which rests under a layer of endothelial cells making up the inside of your vessel, is exposed. This exposure of collagen, which normally would not be present because the endothelial cells create a barrier between the fluid of the blood and the underlying collagen, is a trigger for the aforementioned platelets. These platelets attach to the exposed collagen and become active, which means they change their shape to a spiky look. However, they don't just put on a show, they also release factors like platelet activating factor that recruit more platelets to the area. This is called a positive feedback loop. As more and more platelets pile onto one another, there is a temporary seal created called a platelet plug. Still, this plug is not strong enough to keep blood in if the vessel relaxes again and allows full blood flow. So it needs to be reinforced. Now, the reinforcing process is performed by a new protein, also activated by these released factors, called fibrin. Fibrin, which is generated from a precursor protein called fibrinogen, with the help of an enzyme called thrombin, is then used to create a mesh, or a net, around the platelet plug. This holds the platelets in place, and now you have the necessary clot composed of platelets, a fibrin mesh, and trapped red blood cells, which also add to the reinforcement of the clot. However, clots are a temporary solution, so a long-lasting solution needs to be implemented. This clot will eventually be degraded as the cells that are normally in that location, like the smooth muscle cells, the intact collagen matrix, the endothelial cells, will begin migrating to the clot and positioning themselves in the proper position. The only way they can do that is by the clot being destroyed, which is started by a protein, plasmin. Plasmin originating from another protein, plasminogen, which happens to also be part of the clot trapped by the fibrin mesh, will begin destroying the fibrin mesh. This process is started by the very same protein that helped create the fibrin mesh, 
thrombin. When the clot has been formed, the circulating factors change from a pro-clotting to anti-clotting as one primary factor known as tissue plasminogen activator then changes the role of thrombin from converting fibrinogen to fibrin to converting plasminogen to plasmin. Plasmin will then begin destroying the fibrin mesh, allowing the clot to slowly break apart as the correct cells take their place and eventually the vessel is repaired and can relax to allow full blood flow through anew. So all of that happens to stop you from bleeding out, from the simplest to the most egregious damage to your body. That's also a big reason why adding pressure to a bleeding wound helps the body, because it causes the damaged vessels to constrict, and your hands can help constrict the blood flow through that area to facilitate the aforementioned recovery. But how does the body limit its clot formation, and what happens if it fails to stop clotting, and what can you do about it? Let's find out.